How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hi, it's me. And we have a lot to talk about. Holy moly. Never say never in the world of professional wrestling, right? Isn't that the saying? No matter what happens, somehow people figure out a way to make money and, and, and start working together again. And it seems like that's happening in AEW. A lot of news coming out this week about CM Punk returning to AEW. Another, I guess, flagship show for AEW in the works. Possible flagship. We're going to talk about that. Saturday's two-hour time slot on TNT, I believe. Could be TBS, but I believe it's TNT. We're going to talk about that and what the possibilities of this is. Uh, there's, there's so much to break down with this. Uh, CM Punk and and his return and the possible uh, programs he could be in and how they're going to do this logistically with the Bucks and Kenny and him not being on great terms at all. We're going to talk a lot about that today. WWE draft dates have been announced. April 28th for SmackDown and May 1st. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some circumstances out to our producer, Matt, today to, um, to play out and see who could go where. I don't know. I don't know if they should do this draft. I think both Raw and SmackDown have been benefiting from having top guys on both, or top ladies also, on both shows rather than, you know, splitting the roster and having a, a half a stacked roster. Also, Jeff Hardy returned to AEW. There's a, a Hardy compound match that's going to be happening. We want to talk about that and a whole lot more here on Wrestling Observer Live. When we get back, we'll be going deep into the CM Punk story and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here on Sports Byline. Hey, I want to talk about the convention that's coming up before we go into all the latest news here. The Las Vegas convention is happening. Memorial Day weekend. Here we go. There it is on the screen. Memorial Day weekend in Las Vegas. For more information, go to f4wonline.com slash Vegas. That's f4wonline.com slash Vegas. There's going to be meet and greet opportunities, Q&A, sweet party. I was there last year. It was a blast. A lot of great people there. I I absolutely love this community. I love the people that that show up to the convention. It was such a good time. Unfortunately, I had to leave early. I had a little bit of an emergency back home, but everything was fine. Uh, I I have, you know, serious FOMO from missing out on all the fun. If you're going to be in the area, if you're planning on going to Double or Nothing in Vegas, definitely check it out. F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. There you go. So let's begin with this CM Punk story. And we may go into two segments with this. We'll see. If my producer's yelling at me here, we'll go into it. When did we, Matt, uh, MG, our producer, he's going he's gonna to guide me through this. When did we first start hearing about the rumblings of CM Punk because I was always told from the beginning that if it's possible to make this work, they will make it work. Uh, you know, well, it, it, it's, it, you got a guy, you got a, a top tier guy, right? Uh, the, regardless of what you feel about him personally, take that all out of the equation. This guy is a proven draw in WWE. Uh, you know, he, he's had a he's had a very long career in WWE. He had a, a what a great underdog run as being the the anti hero to John Cena as being the pure baby face in that company. Summer of Punk happens, becomes the guy, has a falling out, leaves, finally gets the itch to come back, comes back. And, and it's was not a not a great year for him as far as injuries. Well, the first went. part was the first, first part, part of, course, of the year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. The first six months was great, and then we got to the summer, and everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. Right? It was not a summer of punk. <laughs> it was not a summer of punk. It was anti summer of punk. It was the anti summer of punk. So uh, originally, and I want to work. I want to go down this as in the order that I was told. We discussed this on Matt Men, but I want to talk about it here because it's a very different approach to delivering this. So to quickly answer your question, um, yeah. I think it's all started with that Instagram post he put out um, a couple months ago. And then you started hearing that, hey, there, there might be more to that than just... Yeah. Well, I um, heard about the, no. the Saturday show before I heard about CM Punk Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, returning. Originally, I was told that there will be a Saturday show. They're working on it. It was conceptualized. 
Uh, there were some rumblings and rumors that it could be a 6.05 time slot. It could be a 6 o'clock time slot. Uh, I was told initially the concept for this is to get more of the talent that is not being represented on Dynamite and Rampage in front of a larger audience. And it gives them another show to work. So, I mean, in my mind, I was thinking like Takeshita, right? Uh, you know, uh, command. Uh, who, who else? Give me, give me some. Uh, here's one. Roosh, right? A guy like Roosh could be oh. on that show, and he could really display what he could do. I, it was, it was pr not a C show. It wasn't presented like a C show, but it was presented as like, listen, this is gonna. Maybe we'll have one big match, but majority of it is gonna be like these guys to get them some TV time. Which is bizarre because you already have Dark and you already have Elevation. But nobody's watching it. ROH. But, but nobody's watching but, Dark. That's the reality. Yeah. You, you know, know so, and, but they're getting those reps. Is they are the getting those reps. Yeah. But then your the story point is change. Make, make them more of a star. Make try to build up more stars that way. Yeah. And listen, at a sick mm -hmm. and and you know, and in my mind I was like, wow, this is really good because of one reason, right? You're trying to grow your audience. And the way I discovered wrestling was not watching Monday Night Raw at 9 p.m. as a kid. That wasn't something that I did. Even primetime wrestling when that was happening. I didn't, my dad would, you know, pull me out of my bed and like sneak me so my mom doesn't know that we're going to watch wrestling at 9 o'clock at night. That, your, your access to that show was very limited. The way that I discovered wrestling was Saturday mornings and Sunday, Sunday afternoons. So... I thought this was a opportunity for them. Maybe they're still going to work on something like this. But th I thought this would have been a really good opportunity to, to target an audience that you normally don't attract at 8 o'clock at night. A younger audience. And you could build on that. Well, that's not what this is. The story now has changed. Where this is now an A show. An A-B show. Listen, and, and, and use that terminology very lightly. Right, I don't know what they define as an A one B show. I, I I can't. We won't know until it happens. You know, Rampage was not supposed to be what it is now. Rampage was supposed to be to continue storylines and to put top talent on that show and to you know alternate every week. It's very difficult to do that because you're hurting your ratings for Dynamite when you're doing that. When you're putting these matches on at 10 p.m. on a Friday night when you've you've already had two hours of wrestling from your competitor. So that time slot really is a problem. You don't have too many other days in a week that you could do this. Right now, they're planning for a Saturday show. The rumor is, or, or what I've been told, is 8 to 10 on, on Saturdays. This is how we're building to Punk now. Which I want to talk about that time slot because it's a very competitive time slot. Very, very competitive. You, you have, not only do you have WWE pay-per-views that happen, you're going to be preempted for NBA eventually, right? UFC. You're going to have UFC on. You're going to have football on. There's a lot of moving parts for a Saturday night primetime show. I don't know. I can't, even, I can't even forecast what the expectation is for those numbers for that time slot. I think it's really un untested. We saw Battle of the Belts happen on a Saturday, and it did. The first one did okay, right? First yeah, one was like seven hundred thousand. So now you have your baseline. You know that maybe you could do seven hundred thousand people regularly if you put on something that people want to watch. So let's bounce back to CM Punk here. The story is the reason why they're doing this. A lot of the rumors and speculation around this is that you're gonna have some sort of a soft split where. Maybe top talent could come in and out, alternate weeks, but you will have some guys that are generally on this Saturday show, guys and girls. All right, that's fine. You know, if you could highlight, uh, you know, a Takeshita, again, I'm going to bring him up, or you know that Roosh is on the Saturday show and he's going to have a stellar match and, you know, you build it up that way. I could see that working. But to say, you know, CM Punk is only going to be on Saturdays, that's not, I, I cannot see that being what they do. I saw somebody reported that. I, I'm going to say, I, I think that's, that's jumping the gun a little bit here. And I think that's a little premature, premature to assume that's the reason here. Because Warner Media is very involved in this. And they are very gung-ho that CM Punk is back. I don't believe they push Tony to bring him back, but I think they really genuinely appreciate that he's back because they know that he's going to bring ratings. 
and this is a positive for AEW when you're when you're working with a content partner that way and you're in a contract negotiation year they've given you another two hours on their network which is very impressive if you think about it this company is three years old and has a five it has five hours on network television every week some people are saying well you don't need five hours but you know what you know what you do need that money for five hours of content that you're creating and it also is is synergy between you and the network and you're more in bed with them you you we're talking about hbo or max now right that's the future for warner discovery for their digital platform you know it's a little bit easier to tell the network listen guys we got five hours of content we got you know three shows on the network plus we got ring of honor uh, every week plus we got dark plus we got dark elevation look at how much we have in our in our block the watch hours that we could create for you on your platform are huge these are all things that come into play on top of cm punk right it, it's it's a very it's not just cut and dry and i'm going to talk about the cm punk situation after we get back here but i wanted to explain i want to start with what is happening here and what they're doing This week's, so at this point, this week on Dynamite, they announced that June 21st will be from the Wintrust Arena in Chicago. I believe the date that is set is June 17th for this show, and it will be taking place in Chicago. I'm not sure if it's Wintrust. I, I don't know if it's now Arena. I, I was, I, for initially, I was, I, I was under the impression it was Wintrust, but I could have been wrong there. Also, this is a go-home show for <laughs> Forbidden Door. So a ton of stuff happening here. We're going to go to a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to go into the nitty-gritty of the CM Punk situation. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Also here on YouTube and Twitch. So let's go into the CM Punk stuff. MG, are you, are you, how do you feel about this? Because it's so, pol he's such a polarizing figure right now in the world of professional wrestling where, you know, there's a lot of, conversation happening as to should Tony have brought him back? How are they going to do this? You know, wh how is his attitude towards the talent? There's so much conversation happening. What do you make of this whole thing? Do you remember back when we did the uh, Matt Men Awards back in uh, first of the year? And, yeah. Uh, it's a thing I do every year with the on the Matt Men podcast, and we come up with awards. And there was one category, biggest draw of the year. And Roman Reigns ran away with it, but not even ran away, but the second place was CM Punk, which was not off TV for what, like three months at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And and he's still people still look at him as one of the biggest stars in wrestling. And regardless of how anyone feels about it, having him back on your show makes perfect sense. I don't. I think it's a win win. It's just a matter of these guys can do business together. Exactly. Um, I still have I still have um, trepidations about how they're not going to cross paths uh, in the back. Are you going to literally have, so we're talking the elite, basically the one that ones that were involved in that, the, the melee, um, not the melee, able to work together. not the melee, the melee. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so uh, that's my point is I think, um, you know, it, these guys are not, it just I can't see that they won't be able to cross paths back there at yeah. some point. So I think they're going to have to sit down and work it out. They're going to have to listen. There... It, it's yeah. going to be silly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't there a uh, um, going into this further? Uh, they're, they're supposed to sit down and have a meeting. And uh, I think there Dave is a meeting that, that's right? taking place. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. go down to timeline. So the report um, and Sean from Fightful did a great job at this. I, I spoke to him before he published this story because uh, I was sitting on a lot of this and, you know, I spoke to a couple of people trying to put together the story. And Sean was one of those guys that I spoke to. I spoke to Dave about it. I spoke to Brian about it uh, because I was told this very early on and I didn't. You know, I'm not I'm not in the business of breaking news. OK, I do it when I when I think that it could be a fun conversation to have. Uh, you know, I'm a media guy. I'm not a journalist. I don't want to be a journalist. I want to enjoy the conversation of what I'm reporting. I, I tend to talk about positive stuff, fun stuff. You know, that's my approach with professional wrestling. I'm not, there's plenty of guys that are able to break stories and do all that. 
if I'm able to break the story, that's cool, whatever. But I'm not, I'm not seeking to be first with this. I'd rather be correct and right than wrong. So it took a couple of weeks to put this together. And also the people that told me were like, hey, listen, man, I, I, I don't want to be affected by this. And you got to have courtesy for these people. You know, if it's a friend telling you something, if it's somebody that you know, if it's someone that reached out in a DM, which happens constantly, you got to do your due diligence. You got to wait on it. If they, if they ask you to, you got to talk and then put together the story, you know, piece it together. So the story here is that CM Punk is essentially happening. I know for a fact that Warner has been told that he's coming back. So he's in the, like, they, they are very much aware of the situation. He, re he had recently said he was willing to return to AEW and he wants to make it work. So, the 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 issue here is that he's willing to work with the elite members. I know that as of as of the time I was told, and as of early this week, they there was no intention on the other side. Maybe Kenny a little bit more than the Bucks, but I know I mean there is no they do not want to work with him. There's been no dialogue between the two sides either, uh, regarding you know sitting down and making this work. So the plans have been put in place to possibly have a tentative Saturday show to be the soft brand split. When I used that term yesterday on Matt Men, I was told that it's less soft than I'm than I'm putting out there. So I I guess there will be people that are predominantly on the other show on the Saturday show. Also, Dave reported that there was a meeting scheduled between CM Punk, Tony Khan, Chris Jericho, FTR, and somebody and other people. I've heard this from multiple people and my, the way it was alluded to me is that the program will probably be punk and Jericho in some capacity. I don't know if FTR is involved or Jericho society is involved, but that seems to be, and you know what? That's a very smart way to do this. Jericho has presented himself as a locker room leader. You know, Jericho came out and said he's a, he's toxic or whatever he said. And He's willing to make this work because he realizes that there's money in this. At the end of the day, it's for the greater good of the company to put your personal feeling aside with this guy. If he's willing to make it work with you, you know what? You can make it work with him too. So maybe this is a, a just to get the ball rolling type thing, especially with Kenny and the Bucks. Because that big money match, the big, big, big money match is a trios match between CM Punk and FTR and the Elite, and that singles match between Kenny and CM Punk. You got some big shows coming up, guys. You're trying to sell out a stadium. A three, it's a three-year-old company attempting to sell out a stadium. I believe right now, Matt, maybe you could find it, but I think the pre-sale like request, right? Not tickets sold, but the request was around 50000 uh, like standbys or, or inquiries, right? Are we referring to all in the, the yeah, to all in? No, um, I'll see if I can look that up for you. If you can find um, that, I, I think I believe, okay. I believe I saw that there were like 50,000. First, I saw 25,000 on the list, and then somebody yesterday sent me a link saying that there were 55,000 uh, potential people, you know, in queue to be in the pre sale. You know, wow. if that's true. If that, that is true, uh, you know, that speaks to some extent the interest level on the show. I My guess was, you know, initially they could sell 25,000 tickets that first day. Easy. But now, you know, maybe you move that bar a little bit. Also, Dax on his podcast confirmed that CM Punk misses wrestling and wants to come back. Of course he wants to come back. He got the itch. Once you got it, you got it. And you know what? He didn't leave on his own terms. He tore his tricep. He, he had the incident at the scrum. He got into a fight. It's not, you know, you kind of want to rehab your image. At the end of the day, listen, people think that he doesn't care. Of course he cares about his how his image stands in the world of professional wrestling. This is, this is a guy that's taken tremendous pride in his work. He was, he was always told he, he doesn't have that WWE look to become a big star. He proved everybody wrong. He became a huge star with with everything against him in the company. And I listen, I'm not I have no like I have no opinion on whether or not he should come or not personally. I I don't have I wasn't there and I'm not I'm not going to fill in the blanks here based on 
what happened. But as a business person, as a marketer, I work with people that I despise sometimes. I just don't get along with them personally. Nothing like I'm not I'm not talking about like criminals or, you know, someone that's <laughs> breaking the law. I think people that I just don't get a maybe I think you're a little bit of a jerk. And I don't I don't necessarily like you. But if it's good for business and there's money to be made, of course I'm going to work with you because my job comes first. Professionalism, which was totally out the window at that scrum. I I'm hoping everybody learned their lesson here and they realize how big of a moment this is for them. Because here's the other part, okay? Ten, I'm, I'm, and I'm throwing this out there. I'm not saying that AEW's going away in 10 years, right? But let's say that were to happen and AEW's gone for whatever reason. They get canceled. Tony can't do this anymore. Something happened. Who knows? They get bought. That story of the beginning of the end will always be CM Punk. That is the moment that they're going to look back in all those documentaries. And they're going to point the camera and they're going to say, this was the moment. This scrum was the beginning of the end for this company. There is nobody that wants that on their shoulders. Nobody wants to carry that burden. And CM Punk definitely doesn't want to carry that burden. Because this is now, you know, his legacy is tarnished. Tony's legacy is tarnished. Chris, all of these guys. If you can make it work, you're going to have to make it work. So what? this is how I see this playing out, right? I see playing out is that you're going to do a trios match with FTR and CM Punk and Jericho and, and his crew. You'll do that. It'll lead to a singles match with Jericho. You're going to spread this among uh, across the summer. You could do some interesting stuff. Punk could have some really fascinating matches on, you know, the Saturday show or Dynamite. You could rehab his image to the core that doesn't like him. If he comes off humble and apologetic and he kind of maybe says something and maybe, listen, man, all if this guy comes out and, and looks at the camera and says, listen, Tony didn't want me to do this, but I want to apologize for what happened. I talk about professionalism. I was not professional at that moment. And I've learned my mistake. And I hope that we could, you know, if he does it, he, he's baby facing himself to the moon. The, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we talk about this. It, it, it's, it's such a crazy thing that happened. Uh, now they're going to have to work backwards and make this work for multiple reasons. You got double or nothing. kind of reset, up. right? It's a yeah, reset. They kinda re yeah. yeah. I think this is going to be somewhat have, of a reset. Remember, you have um, the... Uh, the elite are going to be in this uh, feud with Black Bull Combat Book Club for probably most of the summer, I'm guessing, or going into Double or Nothing and maybe beyond. So yeah. that they're going to be occupied there. So you can leave them out of this and let uh, Punk rehab himself, and then and then yeah, starting next fall, maybe do that program. Uh, I hope so because that's a big money match. That's a huge money match. Huge. I I, I you know. You don't get these opportunities too often. You don't get to do Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels after after Montreal. You know, it, it's not something that happens. And I, I I just use that as a comparison of of opportunities that were totally missed. You know, due to circumstances, not anybody. Sometimes it's not your fault. You know, there were a lot of things, factors that came in here. But if it was a perfect world, and a lot of stuff that didn't happen, Bret would have come back in two thousand two, two thousand three. And had his match and his return match with, with Shawn Michaels, it would have been a big mega match. Obviously, it couldn't happen. But you don't get an opportunity like this too often. And Tony knows that. And I think Punk knows that and everybody involved knows that. At the back of their minds, the Bucks and Kenny have to know what a big mega match this is. When we come back, we'll continue this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline Sunday edition. Spent a lot of time on the CM Punk stuff. I'm going to move on from there, but uh, I want to know from you guys. Message me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. I want to know what you think of CM Punk returning. And, and if you think that they went, do you think they will make this work with the Elite? Or is this just, you know, do they make it work now? Do they make it work in a year? Do you want to see him back? I want to get, I want to, I want to get a good gauge of what people are thinking here. But this brand split, you know, I don't, um, we'll see what happens. It's a lot on Tony's plate, right? You got Ring of Honor. You got Rampage. You got Dynamite. You got Pay-Per-Views. You got now Collision. It's a lot of stuff happening. God bless him. 
He's, <laughs> I don't know how he does it. That's a lot of programming. You know, it's a lot smaller of a team, right? You don't have like 20 writers writing your show. Much smaller of a team. Maybe you can pull it up. And remember, he helps with a football team, too. And he, and, and he also owns a, <laughs> a, 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 an American football team and a, 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 a regular football team. I don't, want to upset, I don't want to call it soccer and upset the international audience here. <laughs> As my father would say, football. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about WWE and their draft that's happening. April 28th edition of SmackDown. It'll also continue on Monday Night Raw on May 1st. I'm taking my son to the Mets game that day. It's his birthday on the 3rd. We do an annual Mets game. So I'll be, I'll be at a city field for that. Uh, you know, I, I, here's the thing about this brand split, right? Do you want to shake this roster up right now, guys? Because you're on a roll, man. Business is hot. I'm looking, I'm looking at the SmackDown results right now, right? You know, on paper, regardless of what you think, right? But on paper, what an impressive roster here, right? Show started off. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens were interrupted by the bloodline. Riddle comes out to help him. So Matt Riddle's back. This sets up Sola Sokoa and Matt Riddle in the main event. Xavier Woods defeated LA Knight. I thought this match was a lot of fun. And I'm telling you, LA Knight has grown on me. I saw that reaction in the garden for him. In person. And... Uh, you know, I'm sure they saw it too because he's getting a little bit more better placement here. And after that debacle with Bray, and that what, what was it called? The pitch black match? The Mountain Dew pitch black match. The Mountain yes. Dew pitch black match. Uh, you got to do the branding. You know, everything's got to be I'm a so brand. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I'll, I'll get my uh, Mountain Dew sending me a check for every time I see Mountain Dew now, okay? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I think they realize they got to pivot from here, but all those kids. All the kids in that crowd, like every one of them that I was that that I was talking, my son was talking. I was just going up to random children, like, "Hey, kids, <laughs> who who are you here to see?" Uh, my son was talking, like it was like a group of like six, seven boys, you know, all ranging in age from like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They all like L.A. Knight, and I was like, "All right, that's great. Do something. Give them something." Xavier looked good, too, here. Judgment Day. And and I do, you know, I got to tell you, I love Kofi's matches. I love Big E's. Xavier's matches are are very different in structure. And it's a lot of fun. I I enjoy watching them. This sets up a confrontation, by the way, with Gunther and Xavier to see who's going to be the next IC champion. I like this Gunther run, totally. Judgment Day and Damian Priest. You know, if you think about how your career changes over a couple of years, Damian Priest, right, was in Ring of Honor. He was doing ads for Ring of Honor TV for knee braces and catheters. And you remember those weird commercials they would put on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wild. And now this guy's a huge star in WWE and he's hanging out with Bad Bunny. Unbelievable how your he's career changes. going to be in a program with Bad Bunny, it looks like, at the I, Backlash. Good for him. Which is I love great. seeing this. I love seeing this. <laughs> Judgment Day, Damian Priest caught a promo, uh, cut a promo. There we go. Here we go with the typos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Matt, Matt, sometimes, I think he malfunctions, our producer, MG, here. Cut a promo on Bad Bunny warning him not to get involved in Backlash. Damian Priest with Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley defeated Santos Escobar with Zelina Vega. Zelina Vegan, vegan, apparently, according to my notes here. <laughs> Rey Mysterio came out to help out the LWO. I like the LWO branding. Awesome. Great. Raquel Rodriguez it and Liv like, Morgan came out to celebrate just to winning interrupt the tag match. a little bit. Yeah. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you a little bit, but um, it looks like they are going to heat up uh, Zelina Vega to get that title shot in Puerto Rico. Okay. So it's going to be a yeah. heavy Puerto Rican uh, Love lineup it. down there. Love it. Our friend Issa is probably going to be. You think Issa is going to be there? Our good friend oh, Issa? I'm sure. Has to oh, be. I'm She's sure. going to love it. Mm. You know, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm like, oh, they're doing the paper in Puerto Rico. She's like, let's go to Puerto Rico. We'll see you at the family's house. I was like, hey, you know what? I wouldn't mind going to Puerto Rico and seeing the relatives. That'd be fun. Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan came out to celebrate winning the tag team titles. They were interrupted by Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. They somehow get a title shot next week. I don't know how I feel about this. 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna let this play out. The tag that that, that women's tag pictures is, is a little wonky right now. I think the plan got diverted when Ronda got hurt, and it, it kind of shifted things. But good to see Liv with a title. Always a fan of hers. Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Madcap Moss with Emma in a minute 29. He had updated gear, and he has his old entrance back. You know, it the might be time to push him. Updated and sweet. It looks really good. I don't, yeah. You know, I, I want to see them do more with Shinsuke. You know, I, I really thought they would have. That's that WrestleMania would have been the moment to put the title on him, even if it was a fast thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy just I, I, I and I whenever I talk about him to people that have only seen him in WWE, it, it's it's actually a really interesting way they react to how much I like Shinsuke, because a lot of people have not seen his NXT run. A lot of people have not seen most people have never seen his New Japan run that are watching SmackDown or Raw. This guy was a monster. He was awesome in every way. Put him up against Gunther. I want to see that. They did that match, didn't they? I thought they, they did. did it. Yeah, but I want to see yeah. it continue. I want to see that. I want to yeah. see that feud go on. Solo Sokoa. Well, the big thing with yeah. The big ahead. thing with uh, Shinsuke was he didn't. Um, when I I feel like when they couldn't put the title on him because they just didn't know. I don't think Vince had a, a plan. He didn't have a next step where he was going to go with it once he had the title. Of course. So it was just going to be a, a quick... Yeah, yeah but they, that they turned the him issue. heel, though. They turned him heel, this great baby face. They mm -hmm. would just hit yep. you in the in the nuts. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable. Not a, it was not a good choice. <laughs> just low blows, you know, over and over again. Uh, Solo Sokoa defeated Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is involved in this. Um, all right. I mean, it makes sense, right? He was feuding with the bloodline before he left. You talk about um, you talked about uh, careers that have changed. Matt Look Riddle. where Solo Sokoa was like a year ago. He's, I they're, they're making but, him a monster. But dude, there was no hero. doubt. There was no doubt yeah. Solo was going to be a big star in that company. There was no doubt. Yeah. I I, I mean, had you know when the second he went down there to NXT, I was always told that the plan for him is to become, you know, they they they. Listen, he's a good worker. Fantastic. He's great. He's young. He, and he naturally fit in, and he's a great muscle. He's a great enforcer for the bloodline. And it worked. They brought up a guy from NXT. They injected him in a main piece storyline. And guess what? It's working. And now he main evented SmackDown, and he's doing all these great matches. So there's he's, a lot of— It's like his third or fourth main event. Yeah. He's, he's been on top of this card a lot. And you know yeah. what? It's working. Now, mm -hmm. the, now they're going to have to add a little bit of personality. Maybe he's the one that turns on Roman, huh? That that that's kind of where I'm going. Is maybe that's the guy. Maybe we're, that's the it's guy. Kind of under our nose, and we're not. That's the guy that takes Roman out. Yeah, that that would be a heck of a story. I mean, you could just it would you keep this whole thing going, this whole bloodline thing, just keep churning. It's still selling tickets. It's it. still drawing yep. ratings, and mm -hmm. it's still selling merch. Don't mess it up yet, you know, on the business side. Next week on SmackDown, Intercontinental Champion Gunther will face against Xavier Woods. WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan defend against Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. Ricochet and Braun Strowman take on the Viking Raiders. Ricochet and Braun Strowman is the most bizarre matchup. It's such a weird tag team. Uh, and I don't know, like Ricochet, I got to tell you, looks great. I don't know if I teaming think... up with Braun is helping or hurting, but I think having some profile on Ricochet helps. And I don't know what you do with Braun Strowman. I think this is the best you can can do. You, you you expose his weaknesses if you in a tag team they can do cool stuff. But you know what um, they they a you know, couple years ago, this guy was so over with mm -hmm. young fans, and just went nowhere. In two weeks, also, we're going to have the undisputed tag team champions, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, defend against the Usos. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, going back to the draft, to kind of wrap it up here, but uh, going back to the draft, how do you feel about this a hard split? Because I got to tell you, um, with Vince being involved, that was my whole point of having a hard split, is I never trusted him to not go back to the because it's a crutch using the same guy i don't in every show 
I don't and think I don't think they should do a heart split. I, I especially now, because you, right. what you're doing, you're alienating a certain part of your audience from watching the other show. You know, I, I got to tell you, like I, when they did the SmackDown split, it really like mm -hmm. I stopped uh, the first one. You're I, talking I, the first one, the talking first time when they, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. when they split it, I, I like it took something out of me because I knew like, like if I want to watch Hogan, for example, I have to put on SmackDown, right? Right. But I wasn't as into Hogan. I was watching Raw way more. I was, and and they kind of told you that Raw was the A show in that time, even though you had, you know, what are the SmackDown Six, and they were doing these stellar, unbelievable matches, and they were kicking butt every single week when it comes to you know match quality and and the build up the story. But you know, you didn't have Brock Lesnar, you didn't have Hogan, you didn't have these guys. Everything was split up. I and it never worked for the long run. Maybe short term, it creates this intrigue and it elevates certain people. Because always I was told, well, if they didn't do the split, then Eddie and Chris would never have been elevated in the position, which I don't I don't think that's true. I think their work rate would have, you know, and, and, and the popularity would have pushed it. But I don't necessarily know if a, if, if a hard split, if we're talking about a hard split, like Cody should be on every show. Roman should be on every show that he can. You know, you have key guys. The Uso should be on every show. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn should be on every show. You but have isn't key that guys. viewer fatigue. Isn't that isn't that too much of fatigue on the viewers? Because I think that's what a lot of people complain about. Is no, is what fatigue. I'm saying, and you don't do it every week, yeah. but you know what? You don't you right. don't put a restriction. Okay. You don't say that Cody will never be on SmackDown because right, right, okay. You 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 keep it the way it is. You know, some guys work heavier on one brain than the other, and I also think that the the champion should be able to go everywhere, and that's something that that's been discussed numerous times. If you're the world champion, you should be on every show. No question about it. You shouldn't be restricted they did to actually, one brand. Up to going up to Mania, yeah. uh, Roman was on both shows. So Roman was on both were, shows, and that was done. And really I trust well. Triple H more to do this than I did Vince. Yeah, so me too. We'll that, see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. Go. We're gonna go to a quick break here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes here on Sports Byline. A couple of things happened. John Morrison won his boxing debut. At Creator Clash 2, Morrison was cornered by Josh Barnett. He also had Hacksaw Jim Duggan that came out. I think L.A. Knight was there. There was a whole laundry list of pro wrestlers that came out with him. He knocked out the guy from Epic Mealtime in the third round. Afterwards, he cut a promo calling out KSI. So I guess they're going to work on that. All right, cool. Listen, good on John, John Morrison. Cool stuff. Mercedes Monet makes a makes a surprise stardom debut. All oh, right, I'm curious if she's going to be doing the Forbidden Door show. I hope she does. I think that'd be great. WWE draft we discussed N uh, NJPW New Japan Capital Collision saw Aussie Open become the new strong open weight tag team champions. They beat Okada and Tanahashi and Motor City Machine Guns. Wild. Aussie I saw team. it. It was a pretty good, good match. Good. It was a long match. I have to watch mm -hmm. it. I watched some of this. Uh, I, I saw the, the, I saw the uh, Juice Robinson stuff. Mm. Uh, but I have to. I have to. I just had no time to catch up on it. But very, uh, very cool. I have to catch up on that today. But a lot of stuff happening in pro wrestling. Also, Matt Hardy challenged the firm to an AEW uh, firm deletion match. I have no idea what that's going to look like. But all right, cool. Guys, this was a lot of fun. I always have a blast with you guys here every single week. Uh, we're live tomorrow. Brian's back. Mike's back. And I'll be back next week. Send me your questions. We'll do a Q&A session next week. At Andrew Zarian on Twitter. Send all your questions over, and I'll do my best to answer them next week on the show. But that's it. We're done for this week. See you all next time. Take care.